What's good, y'all? This is Osiris, and I know I haven't made a video in quite a while, but we're going to talk about the Razor Tartarus. There's been plenty of reviews out there already, so I'm not going to really review how well it works uh, because you can go look it up for yourself. Uh, the product is several years old, and it's been... Uh, well looked into how good the thing is and how good it's not. I'm just going to give you an overview of what it exactly is. And then we're going to find out if it works for Linux. So the Razer Tartarus, uh, according to their site, is a membrane gaming keypad. So basically you could think of it as a controller uh, that will complement the mouse for your uh, left hand. Uh, it, it emulates by default the key surrounding WASD. So it, uh, it would also have Q, W, E, and R, I think, A, S, D, F, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, that's, that's by default. Uh, and as you'll see later, it's easily changeable. Uh, these are rubber domed keys. So that, no, there's, these are not mechanical. I don't really know why you would. I mean, some people may want mechanical, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, Razer does make a mechanical version of this. You can go check their website if you want to know about that. But anyhow, this thing has 25, 25 fully programmable keys, including an eight-way thumb pad, improved ergonomic form factor, and for you Windows people, it has Razer Synapse 2.0. We'll find out what uh, works for what replaces Razer Synapse for Linux in just a second. So let's just like take a quick look at the specs. 25 fully programmable keys, including the eight-way thumb pad, instantaneous switching between eight key maps, improved ergonomic form factor, adjustable soft touch wrist pad for remarkable comfort, uh, anti-ghosting, unlimited macro links, unlimited game profiles, backlit keys for total control, even in dark situation. Yes, it does glow uh, the razor green color. Uh, braided fiber cable, which I think is pretty nice. Uh, it's a little stiff, but I think it's nice. And it is approximately 153 millimeters or six inches, 6.03 inches to be exact, 186 millimeters in height. So 7.332 inches and in depth, 54 millimeters or about 2.16 inches. And it weighs about 0.66 pounds or for you people who do the metrics, it is 370 grams. So uh, it's not really that heavy. It's not that big. And speaking of dimensions, let me tell you about the comfortability of it. I found it really odd. I don't. I don't know if I have. A, I'm six foot one, and I, I, I don't. I wouldn't say I have a. I have a long hand, and I found it hard to get adjusted into a, a natural position when uh, resting my hand on it. Uh, so that's something you might take into account uh, if, if you were to buy something like this. And on the side, you'll see that it has a tr uh, like a thumb rest like thing. That is the space bar. So if all the other buttons emulate the keys on your in your left hand of your keyboard, that part is what emulates the space bar by default. And you'll also see that it has a uh, eight way thumb pad or thumb stick. And there's a button above it. And on Linux, I don't know what it does on Windows because uh, I haven't used it on Windows. But on Linux, it doesn't do anything by default. But I believe it's also fully pro programmable. If you look at the lights right there, those lights are uh, the different memory profiles. The three lights that are, I think, yellowish or supposed to be greenish, maybe. Uh, yellow, green, and blue. And it's uh, overall, it's a pretty decent product. Uh, I wouldn't pay too much for it. Uh, it's definitely something that not everybody will like or get used to. And honestly, for the price, might just be better off with a better keyboard. That's up for you to decide. Now, let's talk about how it works on Linux. Now, if you don't plug any software into this thing, it'll plug right up and get instantly recognized by Linux. Uh, I use Ubuntu for the record. So when I say Linux, uh, I'm gonna, uh, for me, it's, it's going to be somewhat synonymous with Ubuntu uh, or any of the de Ubuntu derivatives. Uh, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure it works the same on Fedora or Arch or any other distribution. But for, for this case, we'll just, we're, we're referring to Ubuntu. Uh, so you can plug this thing up really quickly and it's instantly recognized by Linux or Ubuntu. And 
the lights come on and everything just works out the box. Um, there's no way, to, no way to hardware control the lights. So the lights are just on there. Uh, and with the Razer Synapse software, uh, you can actually control like the pulsing of the lights or turn the lights off and on. Uh, even on Windows, if you don't put uh, install the software, you can't control the lights there either. So everything works. You can play games with it uh, just fine. I've done it without putting the software in and it works as it's supposed to. Uh, so if you were if you were thinking about getting something like this, you can be confident that it works just fine under Linux. Uh, but if you want to get a little bit a little bit more granular or in detail on how to control this thing, as if you were using the Razer software, uh, there is a guy by the name of Konzar, I believe, who made a program called Keyboarding Master. Now, what Keyboarding Master does is it attempts to emulate what the Razer Synapse software does. So he reverse engineered uh, the uh, the functionality of the of this product and other products actually so it doesn't just work for the uh, Razer Tartarus it also works for several other things um, the orb weaver the Razer orb weaver uh, let's see Razer it, okay here we go it works for the Razer Tartarus the Razer orb weaver the Razer Nostromo the Belkin N52 and the Belkin N52 uh, N52 TE. Uh, it also works with the Razer Marauder keyboard and also has a broken functionality for the Razer Naga and the Razer Taipan, which are mice. So, uh, this is a obviously free and open source uh, software. And shout out and kudos to this guy for uh, reverse engineering the, this product, this hardware, so that we can uh, get some more functionality out of it. Now, what does this software actually do? It has a uh, eight unique key map per profile, unified configuration environment, mouse and keyboard support, system tray dock for quick access, user editable descriptions, and visually configured devices. So you can go in this piece of software and uh, remap all the keys per game. Uh, you can set up game profiles or app profiles. Like, let's just say for some reason you want to use this with um Libre Office. You can set up a Libre Office profile. I don't know why or you know how. Why why would you do that? But you know everybody has a different use use case. But it also, uh, my point is, it works for applications as well as games as far as setting up profiles. And once uh, I believe once you launch the game or the app, it'll switch to that profile. Uh, I'll have to double check that. But uh. So if uh, Team Fortress 2 has one key mapping that you prefer and then you go and play Counter-Strike and has that has a different key mapping, then uh, you can you can do that and it'll save those um, profiles within within this software right here, the software environment. Uh, it might be worth noting that you should probably uh, set this up so it automatically starts with your uh, system, with your computer when you log in. That way you'll have that at your hand or you can just... Um, just load it once you're in. But over all in all, w with this product plus this software, Keyboarding Master, you get, I would say, 85 to 90 percent of Razer's functionality. There's some things that, there's a couple things that don't work in it. Uh, you cannot control the lights with this software, and um, I'm not really sure why. Uh, I'm sure that's a that's a question for the developers. Yeah, so all in all, if you're interested in a product like this, I think you can be pretty confident that you're going to get much of the functionality out of it. It's a it's a cool it's a cool neat project uh product, and it it is what it is. I'm pretty sure most of you guys have heard of this type of product, uh, and if you're interested, it you are probably already interested in it. And I can I'm here to confirm that uh, this product works in Linux. And there's also some type of support for the uh, software end of it for uh, configuration. Um, I'm pretty impressed with not only the product, but also what the uh, keyboarding master software allows you to do with it. The only thing that I would say is a con right off the top, for me at least, is that if you're used to switching weapons with the, the one, two, three, four, five keys or whatever, 
at the uh, top of the, the keyboard, not the number pad, but the ones at the top of the keyboard, then that will be really hard to adjust to because obviously with this with this uh razor product there is no there is no keys right there that would uh fulfill that function that's the one thing i found really hard to get used to now in most games you can easily switch weapons with the mouse wheel but i find switching weapons with the mouse wheel to be kind of cumbersome kind of it, it just doesn't work and then that means you also have to usually cycle through weapons instead of di directly picking a weapon but uh, that's all depends on the user. Uh, that's just something I noticed right off the bat. And the fact that it doesn't really fit my hand perfectly. But uh, I think it's something that you got to get used to. Uh, so that's that. I just wanted to bring this uh, little, little. I don't, I'm not going to call it a product review. But this overview of how the Razer Tartarus coupled with the Keyboarding Master software works in Linux. Uh, hopefully you found it some kind of useful. And if you didn't, oh well. There's the dislike button. If you did, hit the like button because even hitting like is a uh, great support for the channel. And if you'd like to see more Linux, Linux related videos and gaming, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But until next time, this is Osiris, Peace and Pimp, and I'm out.